is the BA Breakdown on the KRMG Evening News, where every Tuesday about this time, we talk with Michael Spurgeon, the city manager in the beautiful city of Broken Arrow. He joins us live on this Tuesday. Michael, how you doing? I am doing great, Skylar. I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you. I and mean, right now, my a lot of my time is dedicated to something exciting that's going to happen next week, which hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about next Tuesday, is preparing for the annual State of the City message that I give to the Chamber of Commerce. So hope to be able to visit you about that next week, but I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Excellent. Yeah, we'll definitely put that on the uh, agenda for next week. Right now, I want to ask you about something that is underway for the first time on Main Street, which is really cool. We kind of teased this last, um, we talked about it at some point last week here on the evening news. Uh, The Broken Arrow uh, Rose District Farmer's Market, immensely popular on Saturday mornings, now available starting today on Tuesday evenings. How's it going out there? Oh my gosh. Um, With my schedule this afternoon, I have not been able to get over there, but I'd had uh, someone check and I understand that we've got a great crowd. The Christmas music, the atmosphere is exactly... Uh, what we wanted. I mean, this is in response to a lot of our customers, citizens, vendors saying they like to have something in a winter market, an evening market, a week, a weekday market. And uh, the community development department, you know, led by our farmers market coordinator, uh, Nicole Orchid suggested this and today's the kickoff and I couldn't be happier with what's happening out there right now. The neat thing about this, I was excited about it. I went home and I told Tessa and she said, well, Tuesdays I'll be at work. And I said, no, no, that's the beauty. It's an evening (laughs) thing. So it gives access to people who, you know, they didn't have any farmer's market this time of year right here and they can go after work. It doesn't, I mean, it's just perfect. Well, that's exactly right. It's going to be every Tuesday from 4 to 8 p.m. and it's going to run through February. And then we'll just take a slight break the month month of March and then we'll be back on the set with our regular farmer's market. So this is going to be that interim um, opportunity for folks to come out. I mean, I understand we're looking at close to 30 uh, vendors that are going to be out there. It's going to be locally grown meats and produce just like at the regular farmer's market. And so it's just going to be in the evening. And I, I fully anticipate, especially for the next few weeks, before Christmas, it's it's just going to be jam-packed. And so I just encourage everybody to get out here if you can. And we should mention too, it's in the same place as the normal Saturday farmer's market. But since you have the ice rink there, I guess it's just all out on the plaza, not underneath the covering, right? Yes, sir. That, that, that's exactly right. And so, like I said, the atmosphere is going to be amazing. And so it's just another great opportunity to, uh, if you're living Broken Arrow, to, to get out. And if you're from the other part of the, uh, the great Tulsa region, to come on out because we'd love to have you. All right, let's talk about the uh, upcoming city council meeting. I understand that there's going to be discussion on the um, soon-to-be Korean War Memorial there at Broken Arrow's beautiful Veterans Park. What is the discussion tonight on that future memorial? Well, as you know, is that our commitment to um, the veterans that have served this great nation is unwavering, and we believe that we need to continue to honor them, and there is an opportunity tonight for the council to uh, authorize funding for for the uh, what I would call the site work in connection with the Korean War Memorial, uh, you know, it's the forgotten war and there's still a lot of veterans out there that served in that war and we have some in Broken Arrow. We've already commissioned and it's near completion, an 82 inch tall bronze uh, sculpture weighs about 800 pounds and it was done by a local um, uh, sculpture artist uh, named David Nunley. And in order to put it in and make it look really, really nice with all the related improvements like the rest of the park, uh, we need about $94,000 to complete all of what I would call the base work, the site work. And that's on the agenda for the council to consider tonight. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the Forgotten War. I got a chance to meet some of those guys and chat with them when we went to D.C. back in October. And if you ever meet a Korean War veteran, I would encourage folks to uh, just spend some time and chat with them. Really, really interesting to talk. I look forward to seeing the outcome of that and the future memorial there at BA's Veterans Park. While I've got you, I want to ask you a question we got from a listener. They sent me an email a couple of days ago. um, And we get a lot of questions about traffic. We are Tulsa and the surrounding areas, traffic station. They come to us for all things (laughs) traffic and construction and what have you. So uh, they were wondering, and they've heard us talk roads here in this segment too. So they were wondering if there is a traffic signal proposed or planned at Olive and Tucson. So 121st and 129th East Avenue. They say they have a lot of uh, backups over there in the southbound direction. So I know you're going to know, is there a plan for a light in that area? Um, I will tell you is that we get requests Uh, routinely for traffic signals, uh, new traffic signals. And I can tell you that the location that you just mentioned, I know for a fact is one that we are monitoring. 
because of the growth in the area. And I will tell you right now, we did a traffic study back in 2019, I believe it was, that showed that it, the <clears throat> the intersection does not warrant a signal this time. I believe there's only about 12 or 13,000 cars that actually go through a day. If you go one mile to the east, basically on Aspen and Tucson, there's over 20,000 cars, I understand. So it doesn't warn it right now, but I can tell you there's a lot of homes that are going to be built in that area. And I think you could see something in that area in the 2027 general obligation bond package because an installation of a light is just not an installation of a light. The lights right now cost like three to $400,000. And then you're going to have to make all the associated improvements to the street itself. And so you could be looking at, at a cost of, of a, the installation of a light and the improvements in the intersection to be anywhere from 400000 to a $1 million, if not more. And so that wasn't programmed. But I will say for the resident, I'm glad they're asking that question because we've got the same issue in two other areas. One is Washington and County Line Road. And so we're watching those and we're going to be re uh, traffic counting those those areas and making sure that if, in fact, they warrant to get those into the next bond package. All right. So, uh for that listener and uh, that question. Not now, but maybe someday. Uh, Michael, appreciate it. Always great to chat with you in the BA Breakdown here on Tuesdays, and we'll do it again next week. Look forward to it, my friend. Have a great week.